Hey, what's up guys? This is Kurt, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to use the Transpose Master inside of ZBrush. Now here, I already have a model that I've posed, and it's my Jurassic Park, Jurassic Park style T-Rex. And what I'm going to do is show you guys how to use this feature. Now, I'm, I'm going to use this already posed model because the methods are exactly the same whether you have a model that's already posed or one that's in a default state. Okay, so a couple things I want to uh, tell you about before we get into the actual tutorial is that I'm using ZBrush 4 R6, and there's kind of a glitch in um, this version. So if you happen to still be using this one and you haven't upgraded to uh, ZBrush 4 R7 for some reason, like I haven't done, don't ask me why. But anyways, there's a step you're going to have to do before you actually begin posing, otherwise you will not be able to bring your low res mesh back onto the high res to project the detail. Uh, I, I found this out the hard way a while ago when I tried to pose a model and tried to bring all the detail back and it failed and I had to repose the thing all over again. So my hope is, is that if you're a beginning ZBrush user and you're watching this video to help you avoid making that mistake. Um, another thing I would highly recommend before doing any posing is make sure you have a good UV layout um, in case you want to take your low res model into another application such as Maya 3D uh, Maya or 3D Studio Max that way you know your texture maps will be applied as normal and you won't have to um, worry about any sort of problems when um, trying to project your high resolution detail onto your low resolution mesh in, in another program. Okay, so those are just a couple quick tips. Uh, make sure um, you UV and I'm gonna show you what to do now to alleviate any sort of glitches. Okay, so let's pretend you have a blank ZBrush canvas. So what I'm gonna do real quick is I already have this model saved, so I'm just gonna go up to preferences and say initialize ZBrush. This is first option right here. Okay, so you have a blank ZBrush canvas here. So what to do in order to fix this problem is go to your light box, go to your project tab, you have all these tabs up here, make sure you click on the project tab, and load in the default cube.zpr. And that'll load this cube into ZBrush. And then from there, you can go ahead and load your tool. And here we can see our posed mesh that we already that I already have. Now what I'm going to do is show you how to enter the Transpose Master. Okay, so the Transpose Master is located inside the Z plugin menu. So if you click on this and you can click and drag on this little swatch over here and bring it over into your dock. And we have all sorts of different cool plugins that we have, but we're focused on Transpose Master right now. So we'll go ahead and open that up. And we're going to say T-Pose Mesh. And what we're what this what this does is it drops all your subtools down to its lowest subdivision level. So if we go into our subtools, I have five different subtools here and what it's going to do is going to drop each one of those to its lowest subdivision level and then it's going to let you pose the model so we'll go ahead and say t-pose mesh now i paused the video um, while it uh, did the transfer to the low resolution mesh just keep in mind that that does take some time on occasion so now we have this flat um, color for our posing. Okay, so we're not going to see any of the details because we're at a lower resolution. Okay, so if I turn on polyframe, you can see the base uh, model that I have here. And you can see it organizes each of your subtools into its own polygroup. So you can see this main polygroup here is purple. And then here I have a few subtools that I have different colors. Okay, because these are separate pieces. Okay, so to show you a few things that you can do, if you want to focus on just one tool and you don't want to actually move any others, 
you can go ahead and hold down Control, Shift, and then click on the subtool you want to keep. And you can see it hides the other subtools. And to bring those back, you just Control, Shift, click out into the empty canvas. Okay? So, now in this case, what I want to do just to show you how to use this is I'm going to go ahead and adjust this pose just a little bit to make this look like he's kind of roaring. Okay, so I need to open the mouth a bit and I also want him to look a little bit more aggressive so I'm going to go ahead and kind of lower his head a little bit. So I'm going to start with the larger scale stuff first. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mask off the area that I want to focus on uh, moving around. So I'm going to hold down the control key and if you look over here, if you hold down the control key, you can see it switches over to the mask. And my stroke is set to freehand. So if I were to start um, coloring on this model using the left mouse button, you can see that it's painting a mask over this area. Okay, But instead, I want to actually use a marquee. So I'm going to hold down the control key. I'm going to click on the stroke panel here, and I'm going to switch over to lasso. Okay, and this will make a lasso marquee. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and hold down the control key. And I'm going to click out into the gray space here. And I'm going to go ahead and drag a stroke around the model here. Okay, and this is kind of the area I want to affect. Okay, and I want to, mm, let's see here. You kind of want to make sure you look around your model to make sure it's actually what you want to do. And... Yes, I do want to do this. Now, you don't want to just go through and start uh, posing because what you kind of want to do is soften the mask a little bit to make sure that the change is gradual. Here, let me show you what happens. All right. First thing I want to do is invert this mask. So I'm going to control click into the empty space and that's going to invert the mask. So anything that's this dark gray here is going to remain stationary and we will move anything that's over here. All right. But first, what I want to do is feather this mask a bit. I want to soften it. So I'm going to hold down Control and click on the model. And you can see that this mask kind of gradates a little bit. OK, so the, the darker grays are going to be, remain completely stationary. And then it feathers out back into this regular color here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to switch from draw mode to one of my uh, transform options. And the transform option I'm going to enable is rotate. And that's going to bring up what's called our transpose line. Okay, since it's transpose master, this is what you're going to do. And now what I want to do is I'm going to draw out a transpose line by left clicking and dragging. Okay, and what this transpose lines mean here is these are anchor points. Okay, so if I were to left click and drag over onto this one, it's going to rotate based on this anchor point here. Okay, so watch what happens. If I click and drag in this little circle here, this red circle, don't click over here because it's going to move the mask. Okay, if you want to, when you hover over here, and when you hover enough to the point where there's this red circle, you can feel free to click, and now you can see that the model is rotating. Okay, and that's pretty much all I want to move for that. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and click around and check and see make sure the integrity of the mesh holds up as I uh, pose the model because one thing you have to be careful of is, is that whenever you're posing you're essentially deforming your model and you're going to be deforming the underlying sculpt all right and the certain the bendable areas okay so you want to make sure that you're not bending it to the point where it gets too crazy Okay, and you're going to have to do a lot of repair work. Now, naturally, you're going to have some repair work to do in some areas when you bring it back up to the high resolution form, but you want to try to make it as minimal as possible. Now, when I posed these legs, there was quite a bit of work that I had to do uh, in order to make sure that the model didn't uh, break down in certain areas, like these creases in the legs. I had intersecting geometry, so I had to go back and uh, readjust the mask to make sure that, um, like I said, the model's integrity holds up. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and switch back over to draw mode. I'm going to go ahead and clear the mask. And I can, I'm going to do that by holding down control 
and I'm going to just make a drag stroke, and that's going to um, clear any mask that you have. So another thing I want to do now is kind of straighten out the head. So I'm going to go ahead and kind of tilt the camera this way. And another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take off perspective for the time being and turn off the floor. Okay, because I want to make this head as straight on as possible. That should be good. So I can kind of select the head here. Down to the neck that way. And mask off the head. And then hold down control and click in the empty canvas. And then control click on the model to kind of feather that mask. And now I'm going to go ahead and rotate. And I want the anchor point to be kind of at the top of the head because I'm trying to picture where the bone would be. And I picture it being right around here. I'm going to go ahead and kind of pull his face out a little bit like this. And I'm going to switch over to move. And I'm going to bring this back just a little bit to kind of get rid of some of that stretching that occurred. Okay, I'm going to turn perspective back on. And it looks like I can push this even a little bit further. Now here, this is exactly what I was talking about. You see how I'm stretching? Look at this part of the neck here. You can really see that it's pulling those polygons. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and be okay with that. But I'm going to go back to my draw mode. I'm going to hold down shift and with my that'll enable my smooth. I'm going to turn the smooth way, way down though. And I'm going to go ahead and just kind of alleviate some of that stretching by smoothing out the strokes and then use the move brush by clicking on the brush. I'm going to hit M to bring up my brushes that begin with the letter M and click on move. Get a decent size draw size here and kind of just reestablish those polygons there. Okay, good. All right, let's see here. Let's perspective on. Let me go ahead and turn on the floor real quick. Okay, good. And another thing I'm going to do is kind of fix the head. I kind of, kind of lost the shape a little bit at the top of the head. So I'm just going to go ahead and kind of get that back just a little bit, not too much. Okay, so now I want to open this mouth a little bit, and here's where it gets tricky because I have a lot of teeth to worry about. So I can't just go ahead and control drag and select the lower part of the jaw and start to rotate it because you're going to see what happens. So you can see that it drags over those teeth and it <laughs> extends those teeth. So that's not really going to work out for us. So what's going to have to happen here is we're going to have to kind of rearrange these poly groups a little bit. So if I go into polyframe here, I'm going to go ahead and click on the up uh, click on the teeth by control shift clicking to isolate them. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and control shift. I'm going to switch over to a lasso selection here. I'm going to go ahead and select these teeth being very careful around these areas. And I'm going to go ahead and hide those. I mean um isolate just those teeth. So anything within that green that you saw there is going to remain visible and it's going to hide everything else. So I'm going to go over to poly groups and I'm going to go ahead and say group visible. Okay, so I'm going to control shift click out into here and now these teeth are a separate poly group from the rest of the model. So if I go ahead and click on that, it keeps that but if I control click on these, you can see it keeps just those upper teeth. Okay. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to poly group this lower jaw on its own thing as well. So I'm going to control shift click uh, the main part of the body here. And I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to turn off polyframe. And I'm going to control shift. Oops, hold on. Control shift. There we go. and select that area there. Now you can see I missed a few spots. Okay, so this is tricky. 
There's really no way around it at this point since I've already posed the model. Okay, so let's see here. Whoops. I'm going to, instead of hiding it, I'm going to use a mask because it'll allow me to polygroup based on a mask as well. So I'm going to get that in there. And I'm going to go ahead and hold down control. And I'm going to switch over to freehand and take down the draw size a little bit and just color the mask in through here. Okay. Get this area here. Now, odds are when you're posing, you're going to have a default um, position, kind of like when you model it. Uh, you probably modeled likely in T-pose, uh, like I did originally. But it's good that I'm showing you these little bit more complicated ways of doing it, because believe it or not, this is the more this is the more challenging way of masking. So if you know this way it's going to make the rest of it easier. So I'm going to go ahead and go back to polygroups and say group masked and go back to polyframe and you can see now that there's a different shade of color here for this lower jaw. Okay so I'm going to control shift click out into here again. I'm going to control shift click the, now the tongue's fine. Alright so what I'm going to do so I'm going to go ahead and control shift. Let's see here. I'm going to control shift click this guy here. This is the entire rest of the body with just the lower jaw missing. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to mask this whole thing by just hitting control. I'm going to switch back over to lasso. I'm going to mask this whole thing off. I'm going to control shift click here and I need to also mask off the eyes okay I'm gonna control shift click these teeth here I'm gonna go ahead and mask these teeth and control shift click in here bring those back so now all that's left is the um, tongue the lower jaw the teeth and this little membrane here Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to control shift click this guy. Whoops. Okay, what happened here? <laughs> Let's see here. Let's go back to polyframe. Well, it's not separated polygroups. There we go. I just had to get closer. Now I'm going to control select this portion up here off there because I want to keep that part relatively stationary of the upper part of the mouth there. So now finally I can go back into my rotate tool and I have my transpose line where I want it for the most part. I'm, what I can do is actually go ahead and click on this yellow line here and I want to bring that bring this transpose line closer to the center of the mouth and rotate this and now I'll go ahead and open this up another thing I can do real quick though is feather that mask I'll show you exactly what happened so if I bring that you can see how these polygons here get really jagged and that's because it's come to an immediate stop the mask has okay so that's why you want to feather that mask I'm glad I did that that way I can show you the importance of that so control shift click there softening that mask and now when you see it you see that it bends a lot nicer okay keeps that deformation a little bit cleaner so I'm gonna go ahead and open the mouth but you can see still that there's some stretching there okay so maybe I need to feather it one more time So 
So now I have the mouth open. Good. So now I'll go ahead and go back to draw and fix just that little bit of wonkiness down here that I just was not able to avoid. So I have a low intensity on the uh, smooth brush. I'm just holding, like I said, I'm just holding down shift and kind of fixing that. And look at this. I missed part of the eye. I have to control Z back to the point where I didn't do that. So I guess I missed part of the mask. So I'll go ahead and control drag over that eye and let's try that again. That happens sometimes. Sometimes you just miss something. That's why you always have to check around your model to make sure that the integrity is holding up. Mouth is nice and open. Let's go ahead and make it look even more aggressive by taking the move brush and kind of bringing that forward a little bit. Maybe his mouth is kind of on top of just opening like on a hinge. He has some freedom to move his jaw, you know, back and forth like this. And it's still doing that to the eye. I have to be a little bit more careful here. So let's go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and hit this. Transparent. Nope. Let's see here. Make sure I get that whole area. I didn't think I could miss it. Okay, that's okay over there. That's okay over there. Finally. Sorry about that. Open that mouth a little bit wider. Go ahead. And one thing to note, like the move brush, any sort of axis you click on, it's auto-saving, so I'm going to go ahead and pause and let it do that. Okay, we're back. All right, so what I was telling you before about these transpose lines is, is that if you click on... Um, specific ones they'll do certain things so I have the move brush active here and if I move like that you can see what happens it completely jacks up so I'll hit control Z to undo that if I click over here you can see that kind of has a stretchy type way of moving which is not what we want in this case it might be in some instances but in this one I want to click right here because it's going to keep everything normal okay it's not going to skew it it's not going to do any craziness it's just going to go ahead and move the whole thing based on your mask. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and drop that jaw down just a little bit more like that. Okay, so there's that. And same thing with the rotate. If I use the rotate tool, if I click here, it's going to rotate down this way. If I click in the center one, it's going to rotate this way. And if I click on this one over here, it's going to rotate that way. Okay, so you want to make sure that you're using the correct rotations and the correct movements. Same thing with scale. Scale has its own attributes as well, but I rarely use this when transposing. Okay, sometimes I might um, for whatever purpose, but I can't think of a reason why I would use it here. So I'm going to go back to draw and take that draw size down and kind of just fix this area right in here. Anything fixed needs fixing over here, just a little bit. Okay, good. All right, let's go ahead and take a look inside here. You can see here we have a little bit of shape breakdown on the inside of this mouth here. And since the mouth is open, it's likely we could see in here, so I kind of want to fix that. And same thing here with this little membrane area. All right, another thing I want to do is I want to make this tongue look a little bit more dynamic, okay? Because it's kind of just resting at the bottom of the mouth, bottom of the mouth. So what we can do, I'm going to go ahead and can, whoops, I'm going to go ahead and Control Shift click the tongue. I'm going to go ahead and Control Drag over it to mask it. Control shift click out into the canvas. Control click on the canvas again to invert the mask. 
go to rotate and I'm gonna go ahead and lift that tongue just a little bit like that kind of gives it a little bit more movement okay go back to draw clear the mask and that is a completed pose all right so now finally what I'm gonna do so I'm gonna go ahead real quick and I'm gonna save a version of this at low res just in case the transfer back up to high res has any sort of error all right so I'm gonna go into my tools menu I already have a pose one I'm gonna change this name to pose two and save it okay so now I'm much more comfortable with transferring back over to high res and for that we go back to our down to our transpose master options and choose T pose to sub T okay I'll go ahead and do that and let it do its thing this might take a minute so I'll go ahead and pause the video while all the details transfer back okay so the transfer back took 42 seconds and it went without a hitch which is good so I'm going to go ahead and you, you can see here that I have a little bit of weirdness going on here. That's because I have a different material. So I'll go back to basic material too. And there we go. So there you have it. That is Transpose Master inside of ZBrush 4R6. And what I'll do is I'll go ahead and play an entire Transpose video at the conclusion of this. So you can see the entire process from T-Pose all the way to a finished pose. All right. Thanks for watching, guys. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit the thumbs up button. Also, subscribe because I will have more ZBrush related videos coming to the channel. My name is Kurt Robinson once again, and I will see you in the next video. Have a good one.